And now, here's your host, Archie Campbell. She's a talented musician, a comedian, and a dear friend of mine. Her mother and father were country music performers, and her father was one of country's first recording artists. She and her brothers and sisters performed with their parents as one of country music's most famous family acts. And we'll be right back to meet her after this. I'm going down that road feeling bad. times, I'm sure, is Miss Ronnie Stoneman. Uh, Ronnie. Ron <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie. Well, you don't you... get that big outburst of enthusiasm here that you get over there. We do it. We cool it here, you see. Well, I did it down at Fanfare, you know. You're sitting in my <laughs> living room. <laughs> okay. And welcome to my living room. All righty. Where's the hors d'oeuvres? I don't see anything that, you know, no wines. Okay. Right. you kind of like born in the, born backstage, weren't you? Well, uh, see, there were 23 children. And I was 17, there was 23 children, but I was 17th child. And I didn't know that till I got married the first time. And uh, they didn't even have my name on my birth certificate. But anyway, um, yeah, I was, didn't you say I was, was I born in the family? You were born in the business. Uh, I, I should have yeah. said it that way, maybe. But you were born no. in show business. Yeah, well, see, Mom and Dad, I, I was, what I was saying, see, there was so many of us, of course, and Mom and Dad were picking and grinning and hard times. At, I came along after the depression years and you know during after the depression years and mom and dad um well mama was coming through washington dc they were going away to a picking job you know they were playing some theater in washington yeah. and mama was in the family way with me and she said hark i feel a pain and so they took <laughs> me that's true that's the way she did it I reckon and so they took her to this hospital it was gallinger old gallinger hospital then and uh <clears throat> i was born in the old gallinger and three days later, they was playing this theater, and they, Mama fixed a, a dresser drawer and put me in it as a bed. So that's where I went to. Well, that was, was my first this house. at the theater? Yeah, they brought me from the hospital to the theater and put me backstage in the dresser drawer. Three days later. Three days later. Well, it did take her long to look at a hot horseshoe, you know. <laughs> oh God, just after the 17th, you know. That's done. That's done a lot these days i mean to make the mothers get up quick but back then usually they stayed around a long time and waited well to... honey my mama bless her heart in the later days you know you, like i said you know you, there was no way to do that your mother had 23 children yes yeah she had five sets of twins so that hurried things up a lot you yeah. know they liked each other a whole lot mom and dad have you always been kind of shy <laughs> Honey, when you're from that large of a family, there, you know, you got to have, and you're naturally squirrely anyway. Well, listen, we had we had your two sisters on, and believe oh, me, brother, they I can know. they can talk about as fast as you can. But they're sweeter, you know. Now Donna's a minister, and every time I get married, bless her heart, she prays for me. Uh -huh. She really is sweet, and I love. I mean, they're quiet and they sweet, you know. <laughs> every time you get married, she prays for you. Yeah, she comes over and she says, Bless, she says, Ronnie, honey. I know how you feel. I know your heart, and I'm praying for you. I said, keep praying, Dad. I've never had a better time in my life. <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> that was nice to say, but that's what I do. Did, uh, now, born in a family like that, like, uh, did you, you felt like you had to learn to play an instrument right off, huh? You know, I never, never thought about that, Arch. That, that question's never been asked. But well, I know, but you, you learned to play different instruments. Right? Oh, yes. Well, we all picked. Daddy made all of our musical instruments. Yeah. Because uh, he would see some of us. The, how we started picking was that some kids, you know, there were so many. We had this one-room house for, many, for about five years. It was one room. That's all we had. And Daddy would make all of our musical instruments, and uh, he would set, or he'd set a banjo or a guitar he'd just finished making and put it on the bed, and he said, now, y'all leave that alone. And of course, you know, some of the boys, my older brothers and all, would get over there and start picking and singing on it, you know. And if I happened to want to pick it up, we'd have to really get down and fight. You know, Mama didn't allow bickering and arguing with each other, but we fought over the instruments because it was not enough to go around. And uh, if you could tune it, Daddy said, now, Dad, blame it, I don't want it out of tune. When I come home from work, he says, I still got the clamps on it, uh, you know, putting it together to yeah. make it work. And uh, so we'd all get down and pick, and, and uh, if he saw you over there tuning it pretty good and getting out a song or two, he'd come home one day, he came, the first one, Archie, he came home and he had a piece of wood and he started carving the neck of the banjo out with his little pocket knife, my first banjo. Ronnie, how old were you when you learned to play the banjo? 
Well, I, when I was, it's funny, the banjo has been a part of my life since I was about four, three or four years old. Cause Grandpa had, Grandpa Frost, Mama's dad played the banjo. He played the old fashioned claw hammer style. Mm -hmm. That, you know, really neat old stuff. Flogging it. Yeah, kind of, but it was a gentle clogging. Not yeah. flogging, like, not like Grandpa Jones. He was really, yeah, you know, Grandpa's great. But Grandpa was like the old fashioned quiet mountain yeah. ear type of sound. And he gave me a banjo when I was really little and it, and it was an old, old banjo, and I used to drag it around because I didn't have any dolls or anything. And we used to play with the instruments. And I took it to the sand pile and used to pour sand in the resonator, around in the resonator, and hit the strings and look for sounds. You know, as you pour, it's kind of stupid, though. I won't but talk you about play it. now. You play now the way you play now. You play with the picks and everything. The what, three finger roll. Who yeah. influenced you on that? Was it Earl Scrubs? Or well, at first I got hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my brother Scotty, Scott Stoneman. Uh, he was extremely talented, and he got me started in the banjo because one thing, there wasn't anybody in the family except my brother Billy who played the five-string banjo. That was the only instrument left, and I always had to take leavings, you know, and even because it was too heavy for the other girls to play. It's a uh, five-string banjo is a very heavy instrument. You carry around and just <laughs> grunt, and your posture goes to pieces, and you just grunt every time you pick it, you know, and I used to, but, um, I started playing it because nobody else in the family played it and because Scott used to bring in some little old boys down that played with Mac Wiseman mm -hmm. years and years ago. And I would get struck on them and walk around and drool at the mouth. <laughs> you know, you, because did, they pick. But the banjo is harder to learn, it seems to me, than a guitar. Oh, yes, it is. But I think everybody that plays a banjo should learn how to play at least a few chords on a guitar and know the timing. Do you, do you play other instruments? Yes, I do. I pick a little bit here and there. I learned to pick different instruments because uh, it had to be done, yeah. you know. Like you play the, the auto harp too, don't I you? I play the auto harp yeah. and I play the harmonica and I play a bass, bass fiddle, upright bass. I used to play the bass fiddle when I was carrying all my babies. And I'd hike it up a little bit and put my tummy in that area. <laughs> Nobody knew I was in a family way. <laughs> I'd play all night long. <laughs> oh, wow. Those were the days. And you've always been sort of the shy type. You, think Archie, I swear to you, this is no <laughs> lie. I was. I really was a very shy little girl and a young girl. When I went to play music first time with Scott, Mama said I could go if Scott would take care of me. And this was in Washington, D.C., downtown in those clubs. Now, those clubs, some of them, you know, were called skull orchards. Was that, now, was that uh, the beginning of the uh, Stoneman family as we knew him? As a, the, the younger set, yes. Yeah, the younger set. That's the what younger, I'm See, there about, was yeah. five bands in our family at was once. It, you did a lot of TV shows. You did everything as that the, Stoneman family. Yes, that was in the, the, yeah, the younger set. This is the ones. Now, well, how see, many was in that group? There was five to six. Sometimes mm -hmm. when Scott was sober, he'd show, it'd be seven. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the Stoneman family in 1965.
Well, and Pop Stoneman, one of country music's first recording artists. One of them, yes. I think the first one was Vernon Dalhart, and he was the kind of a pop singer until he did a, a folk song, from what yeah. I gather, you know, from my learnings, yeah. yes. But Daddy was the second artist to record other than because of Vernon Dalhart. Yes, he was. And you did it in Bristol, Tennessee. And he did a recording in Bristol, yes. Yeah. And, you know, he told me when, uh, I remember, I, we used to travel a lot with Dad on the road, bless his heart, and he would tell me stories about mm -hmm. himself and um, about his days of playing music and getting the mountaineers to go to New York, or Chicago, yeah. the mountain boys, and they had never been away from home in their whole life, and to get them to go on a Pullman car. He always talked about a Pullman, oh, yeah. you know, good days. And they would get homesick and he'd have to send them home. Uh, but uh, Daddy was, was great. He was a good, he good sure man. Was, Not only he? was he a pioneer, but he was a good, Good man. Did he record under different names, or was it always Pop Stoneman? No, he recorded under <clears throat> eight different names. Eight different names. Eight different. From what I remember, <laughs> it was eight. That's, different that's names. what they would do back in those days, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, Ronnie, your your dad was also an inventor. What was that thing called the the whomper? Oh, that was a bass bass. Uh, we had use it a bass banjo. We called it later bass banjo too. Jimmy played it first. We didn't have any, you know, we didn't have the money to go buy the instruments. And the children were so talented. And Daddy, well, like, oh, in school, the school system uh, came down one time with six people from Washington, D.C. We went to school right out of Washington. And uh, the people came down and wanted the children, about six of the Stoneman children, to be sent to that Juilliard school in New York. We didn't know what Juilliard School in New York Juilliard was. Juilliard School of Music. Yeah, you know, we didn't know, honey. We didn't. Now I know, you know, because I read about it. You know, I read every now and then. <laughs> but um, I remember them saying, well, we would like for them, we were going to send this, these children here, and he pointed out the ones. We sent this big, long table Grandpa Frost had made, and every time somebody would get married, we'd take a slat out. We're glad they're gone, you know. <laughs> that's how crowded it was in the house. And, uh, and that's true. Everybody laughed, but that's the truth. Anyway, they came in, they said we'd like to have, we'd pay for them to go to that school, and the District of Columbia was going to pay for them to go of that school in New York. And Daddy said, well, I don't know, y'all want to go? And the boy said, no, Daddy, we want to pick and grin with you. So they never did go. And that was homemade instruments, and Daddy would make instruments to, for them to learn to play on themselves. Well, now, you had, a, you had a national TV show with the family on ABC. Yeah, it was, well, it was a big syndicated show, really a good show. But and it wasn't ABC, it was syndicated? Yeah, it was a syndicated I show. See, yeah. And it was right here, I think out of here, you mm -hmm. know, out of Nashville. And we did it for about five years, I believe it was. And that was what a was lot the boy, of work. The, the fellow that worked with you is from Chattanooga, I knew him. Gene Goforth. Gene Goforth. Gene Goforth. I always said, Gene, go back, you didn't say, may I? <laughs> But uh, he, he was uh, the one that got it started. Yes, yeah. he Gene was. Gene was a good guy. I, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I, I heard him from the other day, as a matter of fact. Really? He's coming into Nashville soon. But we were playing. We came to Nashville, you know, and we was the first. The, the Stonemans were the first country artists to bring music to Printer's Alley. I remember when I worked yes. with you in Las Vegas, you were the Stoneman family then. Yes, yeah, the Stoneman family. In the family. meantime, you broke away. What happened? How did you become a solo act? Well, Donna, you know, is a minister, and I'm a sex symbol. <laughs> Ain't you a laugh? Um, somebody laugh. Hey, hey. But uh, anyway, I don't know. I used to, the family was so good, and you knew when we got up on that stage, we worked so hard to, as a unit, but everything was so laid back to me because I knew they was going to be good, and I was just going to have a good time. And I'd look at the audience, hey, and I'd take away. And Daddy said, Dad, blame it, sit down. If you can't act like a lady, don't get up here. And being la ladylike on a stage ain't no fun. <laughs> so I just thought... Did you, did you, uh, is that what started you in the comedy business, or did you do that before? I can't understand where did it came you work from, it with the, with the with the band? You didn't do comedy with them, did you? No, I kept my mouth shut as much <clears> as I could, but I was get bored. I was, I was a wreck, a total wreck, and I was bored out of my mind. Because I, I only had the mic once in a while. Van had it. You know how big Van is. Yeah. Dang, if I'm going to take his bike from him. So I was sitting over there, and I was doing all these little antics. I'd have to get behind Daddy, because Daddy would fuss at me. 
because I had all these thoughts going through my head that was I thought was phenomenal. You know, hey man, that's funny. It's great. <laughs> so I'd get behind Daddy and go, you know, and pick and grin. But you've you've enjoyed quite a bit of success on Hee Haw. Oh, made a big difference in your life, didn't it? As it did mine. Oh, Archie. Now now the clown gets serious. And when I get serious, I almost cry because Hee Haw is, is a blessing. It's been a total blessing to me. And it's been great. It's helped me raise my children. I raised seven children. And it sure has helped me there. And I'm just, I, there's no words to express how much I love it and how thankful I am. We'll be right back with Ronnie Stoneman. Fire on the mountain, mountain in the air. Golden Elm Hills and it's waiting for me there. Let's see. Let's ask one of those Grand Ole Opry stars, Bobby, what they think of White Light. Let's ask Kitty Wells. Hey, Kitty Wells. Meow. We want to know what you think of White Lightning, Kitty. I can't get enough of that wonderful stuff. I don't care what people say. Let's ask another Grand Ole Opry star. Let's ask Ernest Tubb. Hey, Ernest Tubb. Oh, what you want, son? I want to know what you think of white lightning. Other kinds may come and go, including old black crow. But good old white lightning's here to stay. That. We've asked everybody except Pop. Hey, Dad, come up here just a minute. We want to know what you think of this stuff they call white lightning these days. What did they used to call it way back when? Only call it that little mountain dew, 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 and the magic you did out here. Shut up, I'm all give me fill up my jug with that good old mountain. Well, a city slicker came in, he said, I'm tough. I think I want a taste of that powerful stuff. He took one slug and then he drank it right down. And I heard him a moaning as he hit the ground. Lightning started flashing, thunder was a crashing. Don't drink it all. Save some for your paw. All right. Swipe lightning. That was the talented Stoneman family. Do you, are you <coughs> brothers and sisters still perform as the Stoneman family? Yes. Yes, they do. They still pick and sing, and I'm going to be picking with them. I'm going, we're going to Vegas. Oh, are you now? Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, we're going to Vegas, and I'm going to be picking with them. Where are you I did work a show there, with you them. Know? We're working, uh, no, not yet. Yeah. We got something going. Yeah, good. But uh, it's, yeah. it's uh, um, I mean, we're going to go do Vegas, and I think we do some uh, videotapings, yeah. video shows, you know, our own video stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'll be, I worked with the family two weeks ago for the first time in 15 years. Really? And with just the Stoneman's well, the way how, the sound how... used to be. Do you think uh, growing up in show business was an asset, or do you sort of regret it at times? There were times, Archie, not long ago, that I thought that I wanted to be a so-called normal, whatever that is. But after being away from Nashville a while, see, I get married every now and then, and I move away, and then I realize how important my roots are. Mm -hmm. I get kind of strung out and want to be somebody that I'm not, and then I get away, <laughs> And I, and I say, golly, I am so fortunate to have a heritage that I do have. We're going to share this with an audience. It's, you said it was all right, but now Ronnie had an eye that was crossed. It was, and has no, it was been cockeyed. Huh? It was cockeyed, Arch. Cockeyed. Yeah, cockeyed. That's what they call it, wall-eyed. Well, anyhow, and uh, a lot of people have this affliction, I'm sure, that are watching right now. And uh, I want you to tell them what happened, and, and your eyes are straight and they're beautiful. Yeah, I got them straightened. I was, uh, 
see, when I was born, uh, they injured my eye at birth. Yeah. And uh, I never did have it. You had an, had an abscess on it and really had problems. And so um, it's been that way all my life. I've been seeing with one eye at a time. And I, kn I knew this from a long time ago. Different uh, doctors had told me that I was looking with this eye and then I'd look with this eye. And things would move with different areas. <laughs> I'd do that. And I was easy to case a joint, you know, and I'd go in. I'd my eyes just went that way. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, Raymond Fairchild, the banjo player from out of Cherokee, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Raymond is cross-eyed as he can be. Now, he picks a fine banjo. Oh, yeah, he oh, is. Oh, I hate him. But we never did see eye to eye. My eyes went this way and his went in that that's way. That's right, his curved in. I know, that's cross-eyed, yeah. <laughs> but um, I decided, every year I want to do something for myself as I get older. I love getting older because uh, I just do. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I do. I get better with age. I get yeah. prettier. I get better. <laughs> and I love it. Okay. Okay. All and right. so every year I do something for myself. So this year was my birthday, May the 5th. And I said, well, I'm going to get that eye fixed. And I didn't tell anybody. And I went to a doctor's office and walked around in the middle of the floor to get the vibrations to see who was good. I didn't ask her nothing. <laughs> and then I finally said, this is the one I want. And I went inside and I asked him, could I get my eye fixed before he haul? was filmed and he said okay how about starting in the day about two o'clock and in the morning we operate and I said you got it Ace <laughs> went in and he operated and I saw double for two weeks it was really something because I had been used to using one eye at a time Ronnie I want to thank you for being over for coming over to <laughs> our guest today has been Ronnie Stoneman join us again for yesteryear in Nashville